Defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilioned in splendor and girded with praise.
Great to see you here today. Uh, I've been telling people uh, lately, I've discovered something in life. Um, God is the best, of course, but I've been telling people marriage is, the, marriage is the greatest thing in life. But after that, besides after God and marriage, is church family. So it's wonderful to see you. It's wonderful to be with you. Um, I met a lot of you guys in 2014. It was great to know you then. It's great to know you now. Um, and so it's great to be with you. And it's so nice to have relationships with all of you guys. Um, and, and so we wanted to welcome you, welcome you and uh, to all of you watching online also, great to have you. Now today is going to be a special service. Becca is a master at planning services, and so the order is going to be different. We're going to have short sermons and, and music, but it's also going to be participatory. So you get to participate. So I need everybody to raise your hand, okay? Now raise the other hand, okay, and wave. Okay, it's so easy to participate and be a part and to do things and to, you know, commune with God that way with our bodies. Um, and so we're going to do that a little bit later and, and we'll explain it. Um, and uh, so let's pray together and we'll get on with it. Father in heaven, we uh, thank you so much, God, for your amazing goodness, your graciousness, your faithfulness, your goodness. Um, though. When we are faithless, you remain faithful, God, and we thank you so much for that. We thank you for another year of bringing us through, of, of providing for us as you have promised to do. Now, Lord, we give you the service, and we invite you here, Lord, to be a part. We ask that you would uh, use the instruments, God, that, that, that we have in our voices and, and our preparation, Lord, that it would glorify you and that you would be pleased and that, we would, uh, that you would accept our offering of praise, God, and that we would search our hearts and see... Lord, what you have done in our lives and, and what response we should have for you, God. And we give you this service. In Jesus' name, amen. What you might not know is that this day that we're going to celebrate on Thursday, Thanksgiving, was born out of horrible tragedy. I think most of you may know that Thanksgiving began during the Civil War. And the day of Thanksgiving began with uh, Abraham Lincoln, our president at that time. Just this week I read once again his proclamation, now 150 years old. And as I read it, I was stunned by what he said. Let me read a portion of the proclamation of Abraham Lincoln that resulted in Thanksgiving. By the President of the United States, a proclamation. The year that is drawing toward its close has been filled with the blessings of fruitful field and healthful skies. To these bounties, which are so constantly enjoyed that we are prone to forget the source from which they come, others have been added, which are of such extraordinary a nature that they cannot fail to penetrate and soften the heart, which is habitually insensitive to the ever-watchful providence of Almighty God. 
in the midst of a civil war unequaled in magnitude and severity, which has sometimes seemed to foreign states to invite and provoke their aggressions, peace has per been preserved with all nations. Order has been maintained, the laws have been respected and obeyed, and harmony has prevailed everywhere, except in the theater of military conflict. Needful diversions of wealth and strength from the fields of peaceful industry to the national defense have not arrested the plow, the shuttle, or the ship. The ax has enlarged the borders of our settlements and the mines, as well as of iron and coal, as of precious metals, have yielded even more abundantly than heretofore. Population has steadily increased, notwithstanding the waste that has been made in the camp, the siege and the battlefield and the country, rejoicing in the consciousness of augmented strength and vigor. No human counsel has devised nor has any mortal hand worked out these great things. They are the gracious gifts of the Most High God, who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, has nevertheless remembered mercy. It seemed to me fit and proper that they should be solemnly, reverently, and gratefully acknowledged as with one heart and one voice by the whole American people. I do therefore invite my fellow citizens in every part of the United States and also those who are at sea and those who are sojourning in foreign lands to set apart and observe the last Thursday of November as a day of thanksgiving and praise to our beneficent Father who dwelleth in the heavens. Abraham Lincoln. Did you see the tone? In our history as a nation, Far and away, the worst tragedy we have ever experienced is the Civil War. There's nothing even close. In terms of the dead people, not the World Wars, not the Vietnam War, none of it. The Civil War is by far the worst. And did you notice that Abraham Lincoln, though acknowledging the horrors of war, highlights incident after incident, factor after factor, for which we could be thankful. It's stunning. Thanksgiving as a holiday emerged out of our greatest tragedy as a nation. And this morning we're going to look at the whole subject of gratitude, the mother of all virtues, the most important virtue of all, some would say. But the real test of gratitude is not are you thankful when things are going well, but can you be thankful when things fall apart? The story we're going to look at today from the Bible begins with tragedy. And it's found in Luke chapter 17, and I'm going to read verses 11 to 13. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had met leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Now in the Bible times, the most feared of all diseases was leprosy. It affected everything. If you were afflicted with leprosy, today called Hansen's disease, you were not allowed to live with your family. If you were married, you were never allowed to see your spouse or your children again. You had to live in little isolated communities of other people of your same gender who also had leprosy. And when anyone ventured nearby, you had to shout out for their sake and yours, I'm a leper, I'm a leper, stay away from me. Jewish laws swept lepers into isolated colonies, required them to tear their clothes, bare their heads, and cry out whenever anyone came close, I am unclean, I am unclean. It was an ancient disease. Written accounts of leprosy go back to 600 BC and evidence, genetic evidence, traces leprosy back 100,000 years. 
It's one of the most, it's one of the oldest, it's in fact the oldest recognizable disease that we have in our world. It was a dreaded disease. It was painful. It disfigured you. People had missing limbs. It's, an, it's a disease of the nervous system. So you would be asleep at night and you couldn't feel your fingers. So rodents and other animals would start to nibble on your fingers and in fact eat your fingers while you slept, never waking you up because you couldn't feel your fingers or your toes. It was a terrible, terrible disease. It was a communicable disease. I was stunned by this. The incubation period for leprosy is on average around five years. It is easy to contract and spread without knowing you have it. And symptoms may not crop up for as many as 20 years after you've been affected, infected with it. It was a socially and spiritually stigmatizing disease. It rendered you spiritually unclean for the rest of your life unless you were cleansed. And of course, it isolated you. I looked on the internet this week and it's listed as one of the deadliest diseases in human history. Of course, in that society when Jesus lived, it was thought by many people to be a curse or a punishment of, of, of God. It seems to me that today we're going to look at our gratitude quotient. And the first facet of a gratitude quotient is, are we able to thank God in the midst of tragedy or difficulty or disease when things fall apart? Remember what happened in the book of Job? Job was the most righteous man on earth, so the Bible tells us perhaps around the time of Abraham, 4,000 years ago. And Job, as you know, had, it was, a, it was a righteous man, and, uh, but he was a very godly man, and his children threw many parties because he was a very wealthy man. But as they threw parties, he was always afraid that they would go too far, they would become drunk and do dumb things, and so he would pray and for, ask God's forgiveness. A very godly, godly man. But then, as you know, it was all stripped away. He lost his fortune, he lost his family, he lost his health. And his wife said, curse God, die. After all, you must have messed up somewhere because everything's fallen apart. Your life is miserable now. And of course, you know the famous line. He said to his wife, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not tr trouble? In all this, Job did not sin in what he said. Job, as you know, struggled, obviously, with what he went through. But he came out like gold. And the great test of Job was, could he be grateful in the midst of tragedy? We looked at the tragedy of our nation's civil war. We looked at the tragedy of leprosy. But now I want to tell you about another tragedy. This took place um, in the 1500s. As you know, in the 1500s, if you know anything about your history, that's during the time of the Reformation. There was the springing up of all kinds of new Protestant groups and much infighting among the Protestant groups and with the Roman Catholics, resulting in terrible, terrible warfare, including the Thirty Years' War in the 1600s. There was a pastor, his name was Martin Rinkert. He became a pastor in a town in Germany at age 31. And uh, he did so at the beginning of the Thirty Years' War. The city in which he lived was a walled city and it was protected and so refugees from all around the area in Germany fled into his city, causing terrible overcrowding, deadly pestilence, and guess what? The plague came into the town. The population of Germany, by the way, from the plague in this time period, went from 16 million to 6 million. More than half of all the people died from the plague. Pastor Rinkert opened his house as a refuge for victims, even though he could not even provide for his own family. In the year 1637, the plague was particularly severe. 
at its peak, he was the only pastor in his town, and he conducted as many as 50 funerals per day. 50 per day. In one year, he performed 4,000 funerals. Can you imagine? And we talk about being overworked. <laughs> Including the funeral of his beloved wife. In the midst of this time, as he was performing 50 funerals a day, he wrote a poem, which has been set to music. And the poem he wrote is entitled, Now Thank We All Our God. He wrote this poem out of one of the most tragic times in the history of Europe. So would you stand with me now and look on the screen, and with this video, we're going to sing together the song written by Martin Merinkert during the Thirty Year Roots War in the midst of performing 50 funerals a day. I hope this reflects your heart as well. Shortly after my, uh, my 
my first husband left for the last time and I was a single mom with two little kids one of whom had Down syndrome and was, was uh, got sick a lot he had really tiny little ears um, ear canals and so he would get sick a lot I couldn't put him in daycare because he caught whatever anyone had so I had to go on on welfare and but I knew God wasn't done with our story my little boys and me I didn't know what it was going to look like but I knew he wasn't done with our story and in the midst of that time, I, I, uh, I wrote down my jumbled thoughts into a song, um, not quite as grand as Now Thanks We All Are God, but it is just a little song that I, um, that I wrote in the midst of what I was going through, um, and these are just my thoughts. Who am I to think I know? What blessing should look like Sometimes they're in a disguise As they shape and hurt and don't feel right But I want to rejoice in the good and the bad Steadfast in praise Blessing your name, whatever you bring My sacrifice of worship, Yahweh. Will I only expect from you what I pick and choose? Your thoughts and ways are higher than mine. I don't have your view want to rejoice in the good and the bad. Steadfast in praise, blessing your name, whatever you bring. All of my days, it's my sacrifice of worship. You know, thanking God in a time of frustration, when you can't hear God's direction and, and it just feels like you're doing it alone, or thanking God in heartache when you want to crawl out of your own skin because it hurts so much, thanking God in loss when the emptiness and the loneliness is so big it encompasses your entire being, thanking God in tragedy when the pieces of yourself are so broken you don't know if you'll ever feel normal again. In the waiting for unanswered prayers, when it seems that God is forgotten or just isn't listening. Thanking God then, that's a sacrifice. And it can be the hardest act of faith you have ever done. But it is beautiful and it is right and it is good and it frees your soul because in that moment, you're acknowledging the one who is sovereign you're acknowledging that he does all his work in faithfulness. The author of Psalm 50, who is actually one of the worship leaders, 
I'm in King David's band. He said, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon me in the day of trouble. The one who offers thanksgiving as his sacrifice glorifies me. When you came in this morning, hopefully you were all handed a piece of paper. If you were not, raise your hand and um, somebody will give you one. <laughs> um, and a pen. What we're going to do now is um, we're going to play a worship song on a, a video of a worship song. As the video plays, take these moments in silence, just, just you and God. Talk to Jesus and then write down on your paper. Now this is anonymous. It's not going in the bulletin next week. Um, this is, uh, or unless you want to, you can write your name on it if you want to, but write down that something in your life that you know you need to thank God for that you haven't been thanking him for yet. Maybe there's a whole list or maybe there's just that one thing, but this is going to be a sacrifice of thanksgiving a sacrificial offering of thanks to the Lord. Now, we're going to send offering plates around toward the end of the song, so you've got several minutes to think. It's not to put money in. If you put money in, I might just take it home with me. It's not for money. This is an offering of thanksgiving to God. You'll put it in the offering plate, and then we are going to lay them at the foot of the cross. So this is between you and God. We're not going to read them out loud. It's just a sacrifice of thanksgiving to lay at the cross. So you have a few moments while we're watching this next video. Even when my strength 
that is a more precious offering than you can ever imagine. Let's all stand together and actually sing the words of Job together. Blessed be your name in the good and the bad. tragedy strikes and disease enters one's life when tough things happen it's really tough to be a person of gratitude it's a great great test of our gratitude quotient but there's another test far more subtle and perhaps we do even poor more poorly at this namely when there's blessing we just sang every blessing you pour out I turn back to praise. I sang that and you did too, but that's a lie. We don't do that. You see, not only is tragedy a great test of our gratitude, but also blessing. 
Because the truth of life is, most of the blessings we receive, we do not acknowledge at all. Our next verse, verse 14, we find these 10 lepers meeting Jesus and a radical change takes place in one verse. Here it is. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. That's amazing. It all began with Jesus. Well, it all began with their acknowledgement of their need. They said, help us, help us. Jesus saw them. He could have passed by. He did not. He saw them. He commanded them, go. They had enough faith to believe that what Jesus said was true, and they went. As they were going, they were healed, and they went to the health inspector. The health inspector in that society, of course, was the priest. And the priest looked them over and said, Woo, you're healed. You see, the second great test of gratitude is how do we handle blessing? Now, if we look at the Bible, we find that we do not handle blessing very well at all. You could say that, in fact, Lucifer's sin was ingratitude. He had everything given to him on a golden platter. It wasn't enough. He did not have gratitude, and of course, he fell. Job, on the other hand, was the opposite. Remember, he was very rich, and out of his blessing, he every day thanked God. Here was a man who handled blessing extremely well. Maybe that's why he also handled tragedy extremely well. But the nation of Israel did not do so well. Remember what Moses said to them over and over again. He said, be careful, be careful. Because when you get into this promised land, this good land flowing with milk and honey, you will forget the blessings of God who brought you here, how he brought you out of slavery, how for 40 years he fed you, how he defeated your enemies and brought you into this good land that you did not deserve and you did not cultivate. You did not build its cities and its walls. And you will forget to give thanks to God. Remember the period of the judges? Over and over again, they follow the same exact cycle. They go into very, very difficult times and they cry out to God because of their oppressors and God hears their cry and he raises up a judge and that judge delivers them and they live well again. And they turn away from God. They don't give him gratitude. They go back to the foreign gods, the Baals, and they go through the same cycle over and over again. Proverbs 27, verse, chapter 27, verse 21 says this, the crucible is for silver and the furnace is for gold, but a man is tested by the praise he receives. One of the greatest tests that there can ever be of a human heart is how do we respond to praise? How do we respond to good things? How do we respond to blessing? Here's a verse from Romans chapter 2. Do you show contempt for the riches of God's kindness, tolerance, and patience? not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance. So often we associate the tough things we go through and the bad things that happen, and we say, okay, God, I'm suffering. I'll turn to you. But Paul says in Romans, it is God's kindness that should lead us to repentance. A Jewish proverb says the following, in the judgment a man will be held accountable for every blessing he refused to enjoy. Wow. You see, the first test of our gratitude quotient is how do we respond to tragedy? Those are the things we laid at the foot of the cross. But a second great test is how do we respond to blessing? I'm afraid our default mode is to take it for granted.
all dirty. Please, please, please. Yes. Oh, why is this happening? taking things for granted again? Yeah, I guess so. All right, well, is there anything you can do about that? Because we really need to do some laundry. Laura, will you please give me a more grateful heart? Honey, my car! Okay. We have innumerable things for which to give thanks to God, and God knew that we would take things for granted, and so he instituted festivals and reminders all throughout our faith walk to stir us to remember to thank him. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. The little things, the humdrum things, the hard things, may we all be more intentional in noticing and stopping and thanking him. This is a song from uh, a Seattle worship band back when I lived there. Um, there may be a chance it won't be on the screen, but that's okay because we were going to sing it for you anyway, so we'll see what happens here. Um, but feel free to join in in the chorus because it just repeats itself um, if you get a feel for it. This is about giving thanks for all the little things.
to try something unique. Together as Trinity Church, we are going to write our own psalm. <laughs> as you see on the screen behind us, we have part of Psalm 136. King David wrote it. It was uh, declared throughout all of the history of Israel. They used it whenever they were going to the army or when they were building a, um, their tabern the, the temple. Or they, they quoted this a lot. And um, recounting the great works that the Lord had done for his people. So we're going to create a Psalm of Trinity Church using David's method here. Of, we're going to create a Psalm of Thanks of what the Lord has done for us, his people here in 2022, 3,000 years later. Whether it's personal in your own life or um, something to do with our, our country or the world or, or this church, we are going to recount what he has done for us. So as you see in verse 4, the, there at the bottom, it says, give thanks to him who. That's what we're going to say, but we're going to turn it and say it to him and say, we give thanks to you who. And then you are going to fill in the blanks. And we're going to give this a try. So, um, and then we're going to um, read it as a responsive reading together at the end. So, we're going to fill in the blanks. Uh, the words are going to appear magically on the screen as you say them. And um, after we have enough for a hearty psalm, we are going to read it aloud together. So, you think we can do this? So, we're going to give it a try. Who wants to start? We give thanks to you who... Provides. Right. Amen. <laughs> he saves broken people. Okay, we're going to pause for a second to let um, our magical invisible fingers type these. David had a scribe, you know, so uh, King David did so. Give me a thumbs up when you're ready. Got it? Okay. Made nice. the mighty Rocky Mountains. <laughs> okay, what you got? He healed, um, who healed my mind and rescued my life. All right, another one? Yes. Who comforts us in the darkest times. All right, we give thanks to you who gives victory over alcohol. Why don't you add, and all addictions. You, you doing okay there, magic fingers? All right, yes. <laughs> all right, who gives me not what I want, but what I need. Get blessed us with family and friends, who blesses us with family and friends. Who keeps keeps our family safe? How about if we shorten Let's that? Keeps safe, our yeah. family safe and healed. <laughs> Did you have one too? We'll take one or two more. We are we're definitely a psalm writing church here. I can see it's been it's been hiding here for for many many years. What did I? Was there another hand beside Bill? Okay, let's get this first. What was over here? Who never leaves us alone. All right, and then Bill, did you have? Who gives us eternal promise. Who prays for us. Is that what you said? Yes. Yes. Our intercessor, our mediator, who prays for us. That's beautiful. We'll take one more. Who gives us music to praise him. That's my mama. 
Well, I think that's um, that we've got. We, we could do this all day, but um, then we'd be here all day. So, uh, let's let's call this our our psalm, the Psalm of Trinity. We'll call it Part One. Maybe we'll do this again sometime. And and so what he's going to do is put it up on the screen. We'll start with the beginning of Psalm 136. So this is going to be a hybrid Psalm 136 and a Trinity Psalm or Psalm of Trinity. And uh, Jeff is going to read. The, um, the stuff that we've all added and you, us as a congregation will say his faithful love endures forever or whatever's on the screen. Yes. <laughs> all right. Shall, shall we stand while we read scripture and then our, our part isn't scripture but it's still worship. I'll start. All right. Yeah, so you read, I'll start and then you're going to say for us. Or, yeah, no, no, I, I read the first one. I read <laughs> okay, the first one. Start. I guess we're starting with this. All right. Give thanks to the Lord. For he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. His faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who provides your faithful love. We give thanks to you who gives children and grandchildren. Faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who saves broken people. Your faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who healed my mind and rescued my life. Faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who comforts us in the darkest times. Your faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who gives victory over alcohol and addictions. Your faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who gives us what we need. Your faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who blesses us with family and friends. Your love endures forever. We give thanks to you who keeps our family safe and healed. We give thanks to you who never leaves us alone. Faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who gives us eternal promises. Faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who intercedes for us. Faithful love endures forever. We give thanks to you who gives us music to praise. If you can have a seat. This song is actually, uh, I just told you to sit down. I am so sorry. We're going to sing. <laughs> You're getting your exercise for the day. I'm sorry. This song was written um, quoting Psalm 136. So let's sing this together. Give thanks to the Lord.
Perhaps the saddest fact about gratitude as we look forward to Thanksgiving this week is we don't do it. How do we know? What child gives thanks without being taught? One of the most important things that we do as parents is to try to teach our children to say please and thank you. Why? They don't naturally do that. Have you seen the studies about our country? We are clearly the country in the history of the world that has had more blessings than any other country, and yet we rate very, very, very low on the gratitude scale. It is not hardwired into us. We know it from the nurture of children. We know it from our own nature. We know it from the history of our country. And most importantly of all, we know it from Holy Scripture. For this is how our text ends. One of them who Jesus healed, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Well, if Jesus was a mathematician, what he's telling us is that about 10% of the time we give thanks. And probably that's about the truth. Maybe 10% of the time, maybe 10% of ourselves, maybe 10% of the people, maybe less, do not say thanks. Children, adults, nations, people, whoever it may be, we don't give thanks. But did you notice how this man did it? He was on his way to the priest, it's, it, the, task, the texting implies, and he was healed, and he didn't even get to the priest. He turned around and went back to Jesus. He expressed then his thanks verbally. He fell at his feet. He expressed it with his body language, and he was the least likely to thank God because, as the text tells us, he was a Samaritan. Someone said this, if men do not give thanks quickly, they usually do not do it at all. A haunting, haunting, haunting text of Scripture is found in the book of Romans. It says this, For although they knew God through creation, they neither glorified Him as God nor gave thanks to Him, and their thinking became futile, and their foolish hearts were darkened. It's probably the most, the clearest passage in the whole Bible about the de-evolution of humanity. And it all begins with ingratitude. Gratitude is not normal. How do we change it? How do we become people who are people of thanksgiving as our day set apart by our president reminds us? It begins with tragedy, for thanksgiving was born out of tragedy. And in the midst of our worst tragedy, we as a nation gave thanks to God. It's tested perhaps most by our blessings. When we are blessed, do we even notice it? Do we give thanks to God? How do we change this? First of all, intentionality. We have to make it a point to do it. And then directionality. First of all, we make it a choice because thanksgiving or gratitude is a choice. First of all, we intend to do it, we make choices, then we direct it to the one who is the author of blessings. Those blessings come to us whether it's tragedy or good things, and what kills it? A victim mentality kills gratitude. The blame game kills gratitude. An entitlement mentality kills gratitude. But the Bible says, whatever you do, in word or in deed, do all in the name of Jesus. A story is, a book has been written entitled, Thanks. And in the book, the major thesis is this. Perhaps the clearest route to happiness on this planet are people who learn to give thanks to God. 
May we have a blessed Thanksgiving. Watch now this video called The Cure. Lord, cure us of our addiction. Waiting for the next season of life to think we're good enough. Waiting for the next number on the scale to say we're okay enough. Waiting for the next dream, the next house, the next step up. The next bend in the road that finally makes us feel we've arrived at contentment. Forgive us, Lord, for our waiting room addiction. Addicted to always thinking we're in a waiting room. Counting down the days till we enter real life. And real life is happening right now. And you are the one waiting for us to give you thanks for the miracle of now. Wake us up out of our waiting room addiction. I'm 25 days thankful for our baby's laughter. I'm 15 days thankful that who I am is enough. And cure us with thanksgiving. I'm three months thankful for where I'm living right now. I'm 45 days thankful for my life now. Show us how we have room in our lives to give you thanks right now. I'm three weeks thankful that I have a job to provide for my family. I'm one day thankful for the gift of now. wait don't wait until dot 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 we thank him now thank him now i love you lord oh your mercy never fails me and all my days i've been held in your hands from the moment that the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will see.
Thank you. I've got a few announcements to make that are important. But before I make any of them, I, I would like to personally explain to you how I feel right now. Being great. thinking about kindness, having the joy to be able to participate in the midst of a wonderful family of believers named Trinity Church. I am so grateful, so thankful for being part of this great congregation. I think back over 30 years of all the different things that have been preached about and spoke about and prayed about and different events and so forth. But this service just now touched my soul. It touched my soul in a way that it brings me to tears. It made me feel so blessed and so given in the midst of transition. We are Jesus, our Savior. There's so many things to be thankful for. In the midst of transition, we've been given a wonderful pastor as an interim pastor, Tom, here. And a worship team that did such a wonderful job just now. Thank you so very much. We love you. We really do. And at that, let me ask, or let me tell you, we've made a decision to have a candlelight service on Christmas Eve at 5 o'clock, and it will be led by our worship team. There will be no communion, and Pastor Tom will be home with his family of where he deserves to be. So they have stepped up to have a candlelight service, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. That will be a beautiful thing. And then obviously we'll have our Sunday service, um, which will be... Christ's birth oriented on Christmas Day at regular time. Now, before we're dismissed, there's a couple of things that need to be talked about. First of all, the caring team and social team, whoever you are, if you've been on the team or if you're on the team still, will be meeting together to bring that back, put it into perspective, and you will be meeting in the conference room today, directly after the service. Then also, we have had not a glitch in the midst of our search committee, but a redirection to a certain degree. Not that the search committee has been disassembled, but put on pause and in reference to the responsibility of finding a pastor and finding the future for Trinity, we elders will be taking care of that. And in the midst of that, we ask that who has been and still is in the search committee to 
team up and be prayer warriors for that issue. They will be meeting in the vineyard room right across from the conference room where Bill Reish's Bible study room is today, directly after uh, the service today. So everything's in God's hands. We've had a little bit of change in direction, and the Lord will definitely fulfill his mission in his good time. Thank you all for being who you are. Thank you all for being my eternal family, of which I adore. I thank you for the fact that I've got the ability to be able to be here in the midst of transition. Everything right now, the way this service went, was absolutely godly. I love you all, and I love Trinity, and I love our Savior, and God, the Trinity, except God, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Pastor Tom will close in prayer. Please stand with me and thank you for being with us today and, and this time of Thanksgiving. And uh, may you leave today and uh, eat a lot of food. <laughs> it's one of the great ways that God has given us the privilege of saying thank you. May God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you peace, and as a result, you give him thanks. God bless you. Every song must end.